So, welcome everybody to this morning's broadcasts. When as we fellowship together, I believe we we all had um, a precious, wonderful week. The week just concluded. Today is a new dawn. It's a new week, and we give God praise and honor. All right. So, um, as we continue on our, with, do we call it a discipleship walk of? Uh, journey into our journey, even as we light up the cities across the nations of the world. We, we, we just want to press in further this morning as the Lord will guide us, as he will lead us. So I welcome you all. Um, for those who have been to service and back, I hope you had a wonderful time. And for those who are yet to go, I, I pray that you will have a wonderful time in God's presence wherever you go and wherever you are right now in Jesus' name. Amen. So, yes, Light of the City. Today we are looking at, um, we'll just be taking a peep into um, how to manifest and how to express uh, kingdom realities as the stars of the morning. You know, um, I think somewhere in Ephesians, let's see what can somebody help me read Ephesians chapter 5, verse 27? Anybody can help me read this? Ephesians 5, 27. If you are there, you read. Is anybody reading? Okay, let me look for it. Let me get it out. Good morning, sir. Good morning. Good morning, sir. Good morning, everybody. So See. Ephesians 5.27. Okay, I was going to use voice translation, but I'll go to another one. It's merged with 25, so. Okay. Oh, okay, sorry. Okay, yes. So it says he has given himself so that he can present the church as his radiant bride, mm. unstained, unwrinkled, and unblemished, completely free from all impurity, holy and innocent before him. Thank you. God bless you. Amen. So then there's another place where he says, where he was praying, and he says, until the dawn, until you break into the dawn, even as the morning star. So there is something about the identity of Christ that is expressed in us, so that we begin to reveal him unto the nations of the world. So, but today we are looking at specifically 
Isaiah chapter 60. Isaiah 60. I know it's a scripture or it's a chapter that we have used to pray the glory of God severally at different times. But today we're just going to, that's beginning today, we're going to be taking a look, an in-depth look on this particular chapter. And we're going to use it to light up the city. And I'm trusting that after the introduction this morning or the foundation that we're going to lay this morning, that it will stir up in our hearts a strong desire and a willingness to shift from how we had operated and how we had dealt or seen this particular scripture to push into a new realm, a new understanding, and a new operation, even as we begin to expand our knowledge, our wisdom, and our understanding in the operations of God. Please, can we just pause the recording for a while? I need to... Power oh, just went off. I need to... Please. Yeah, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, we can proceed with recording. Yeah. So like I was saying, I'm trusting and I'm hoping that after um the series that we're going to be engaging that each one of us will begin to manifest the reality 
of what this chapter of scripture, chapter of the prophet is saying. Amen. Now let's understand that all of this, all of the things we are going to be reading from this chapter has been fulfilled in Christ and have been fulfilled in us. They've been fulfilled in us and what we need to express them. And that is why we it's not something that we should be praying for it to happen. It's something that we should be expressing. It's something that we should be manifesting. It's something that we should be living. In other words, this should be, this scripture, this chapter is describing the life that we should be living. But at the time that he was speaking it, he was commanding, he was saying what was to come, but now it has come. But we are, So we are going to re read it as it applies to us. So when he says, rise up in splendor and be radiant. Now, say, break forth with the light of a new day. With the light of a new day. Now, he said, so when we apply verses 1 and 2 to the church or to the ecclesia, we see both Jesus as the light that shines upon us, as we see in John chapter 8, verse 12, and of course, 2 Corinthians, which had been, I'm sure most, some of us are still engaging that scripture. I want to believe so. Um, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 6, that is talking about God who said, let light proceed from the darkness. Out of nothing, out of the dark, he called forth light. All right? So, and the church is the light shining upon the nation um, that we see, like we talked about last week, and even on Wednesday also, um, Matthew 5, 14 to 16, that you are the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. So say, let your light shine. And here again, it says, rise up in splendor and be radiant. I'm actually reading the the um, Passion Translation. So for, the, for your light, your light, your light, your light has dawned. Who is your light? John chapter 1, verse 4. He said, the world was light, was life, and the life became the light of men. So he said, rise up in splendor and be radiant. Arise, shine, for the glory of the Lord is risen upon you. He said, for your light has dawned, and Yahweh's glory now streams from you. Now, in this particular place, Isaiah begins a new section in his masterpiece. The theme of these last seven chapters is the glorious new dawn corresponding to the Feast of Tabernacles. The, the, the Hebrew word for glory appears 23 times in chapter 60 to 66. A possible outline of these chapters is as follows. That's, look at it. Chapter 60, a new day. 61, a new priesthood. I, I'm, I'm, because I want us to make a deliberate study on these last seven chapters of Isaiah. Do it on your own. Then interact. One of the things I'm going to encourage us to start doing, even because we're talking about lighting up the city, and we're going to see how to light up the city today. All right? Um, when we took the quantum, creating quantum fields is one way to light up cities. But today we're going to look, we're even going to look at another branch on how to light up the city. I pray that we all be, <clears throat> we all be attentive intentionally and deliberately and diligently. <laughs> Amen. All right. So you said the Hebrew word. Okay. Um, said so number one. A New Day, chapter 60. A New Priesthood, chapter 61. A New Wedding, chapter 62. A New Mercy, chapter 63. A New Prayer, chapter 64. A New Heaven and a New Earth, chapter 65. And a New Jerusalem. So you see that this uh, book of Isaiah was like bringing out the expressions of the book of the revelations of Jesus Christ. So if you want to understand revelation, st 
study this. Because Revelation talks about the restoration of all things. It, is, it wasn't talking about the operations of the Antichrist as previously we have been taught and we have been made to believe. And that is why people have been afraid every time you hear the book of Revelation, there is this um, unconscious fear that takes a hold of you. Because you begin to see all the devastation that is going to come upon the earth. But if you really, truly want to understand it, study the last seven chapters of the book of Isaiah, which was a prophetic word that was that is fulfilled in Christ, fulfilled in you and in me. Amen. And that is why we are beginning to see, like when you read, by the time you get to chapter um, 65 and 66, you begin to recognize why you see that all the plants, all of nature, they are now beginning to respond to you the way they respond to you. You begin to see the power that you have, the authority that you have, the glory that runs in your vein, expressing the fullness of your God identity as should be introduced to the nations of the world, which is what makes them to begin to run into this mountain, which is who you are, the mountain of the Lord's house, that they would troop into to learn even at his feet. So let's proceed, and we're going to see some very interesting things. Now, it says, And Yahweh's glory now streams from you. It's not saying that Yahweh's glory is going to stream. It's it's streaming from you. You are the only one that did not know it. And that is why today we are going to deliberately see, and I'm praying that somebody somewhere, somebody on this on this line will be jeered up, will be stirred up, will be quickened, will be jacked out of his or her slumber to begin to walk in the reality of this glory that is risen like a sunrise upon you. Now, let's look at that. When the sun rises in the morning, whether you are in your bedroom, no matter how enclosed your room is, you will see that the rays of the sunlight pierces through the, 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 the smallest, the smallest opening, even if it's just that of a pin, you will see the ray of the sunlight. And that tells you that when you begin to rise or when you, when you begin to manifest or when you come into the full expression, let me correct myself. When you come into the consciousness of what of who you are expressing, you see that there is nothing that can actually hold you down. There is nothing that can limit you. There is nothing that can stop you. Which means the only person stopping his or her shining is you. That's why Jesus said, let your light shine. A city that is set upon the hill cannot be hid. You are a city. You are a city that lights up cities. You are a lamp in the room to give everybody light. Now, let's go on. Say, so look carefully. Darkness blankets the earth and thick clouds covers the nations. Oh, my God. Hallelujah. Darkness blankets the earth and thick clouds covers the nations. But Yahweh arises upon you. But I'll put it this way. Yahweh has arisen upon you. He has broken out over you. In his loving out on you, in his pouring out on you, he has broken out on you. And the brightness of his glory appears over you. The brightness of his glory appears over you. 
Now, look, look at this. It said, nations will be attracted to you, to your radiant light, and kings to the sunrise glory of your new day. You see, this is where, this is, this is the growth. I can actually stop here because uh, by the time we finish this, I'm not sure we may be able to proceed to the next verse. But I want you to see something. Nations, we walk by your light. Light is often seen as a biblical metaphor for understanding and revelation, which means it is the revelation that you have that kings walk by. It is the revelation that you are able to, is, to express that commands nations, that commands nobles, that commands princes, that commands the environment to bow to you. So let's pause here a moment. In all that you are getting, he said, get wisdom, and in all thy getting, get understanding. What is he saying? He said, get light, and in all your getting of light, get more light. Why? Because it is when your light begins to shine, it is not the physical light like the light that is shining on my face right now. But you see, with the light shining on my face, you could literally see, if I turn the light off, you may not be able to see all the lines and the contours of my face. But because light is shining, you could see, you could have a clear description of my face. That is why I get into places sometimes, people just recognize me, they call me by name, and I'm trying, I have to smile. I have to put out a smile, uh, because um, I know you must know me very well. So... I'll put out a smile until you until you mention your name. I'll say, oh, yes. I remember when I met um, Madame Lizzie Dogun in Joss. And, of course, she said, Pastor Clem. So I smiled. Wait, she now, she now said, um, Elizabeth Dogun. I say, oh, my God. Do you understand what I'm saying? You see, light brings light is understanding. Light is knowledge. And light is wisdom. That is why you see Solomon. I love talking about Solomon. You know, people see the 1,000 women that he had, 700 wives and 300 concubines. So people see all of that. But listen carefully. There is something about Solomon, even those women. Like somebody said, somebody said, Solo, ah, to manage one wife, you need a lot of wisdom. But to manage 700 wives, and it was never recorded that any of them left him. No, there is something about Solomon that we should respect. You see, that alone, for you to be able to handle 700 wives and to top it all up, 300 concubines, people look at the carnal aspect, but they don't see the spiritual implication of that. Yeah, amongst all the 700 wives, ask yourself the question, how many children did they have? How many? Do you see something? So it wasn't about the, sexual, the sexuality. It wasn't about the carnality, but there was something about this man that he was able to govern. He was able to uphold. There was a wisdom that was displayed. There was so much light that is shown. Have you not read that a time will come by reason of your knowledge and understanding that, look at it, he said, seven women will take a hold of the clothing of one man and say, we, want, we will be your wife. Don't worry, we'll take care of ourselves. You don't need, we are not asking for your food. What are they seeing? They are seeing light. They are seeing understanding. They are seeing knowledge. They are seeing that by you, they can profit. Just like when you see the word, the bride and the bridegroom, the bride and the groom and their relationship. It's not about the sexuality. 
is about the kind of relationship, the fellowship, the intertwining, the becoming into one of a union that cannot be broken, that expresses the life of the one in the other and the life of the other in the one. Do you understand what I'm saying? So you begin to see that here he was saying that nations will be attracted to your radiant light and kings to the sunrise glory of your new day. When David, I mean, sorry, Solomon was anointed in wisdom. And you see that by wisdom, he shot, by wisdom, he conquered nations to the point that he had peace all around because they knew that this man had an understanding. He had a light. He did not need um, all the armies of the world submitted to him because of the light that he bore. And that was why you see that every time you read Solomon, there is an aspect that opens up to you. Look at, there was something that came up in our conventus on Friday. Powerful. Very powerful. And I have been meditating on that word. And every time I open it up, it's, it blows my mind. And this is the word. This is the statement. He said, <laughs> hard workers, hear this, hard workers are lazy people. I'll, uh, let me let me allow you to take it in. <laughs> now, if I leave it there, something will start ringing in your head. Bang, 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 bang. Don't knock your head too much. But think about it. Those who work hard, he said they are lazy people. Now, I'm going to use scriptures to open it, open it up for you. Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. <laughs> Woo! I like what I'm sensing right now. I like this. I love this suspense. Hmm? People are wondering, how can he say hard workers? Ecclesiastes, I'll read from verse chapter 1, and I'll read from verse 1. It said, the words of the preacher, the son of David, the king of the king in Jerusalem, vapors upon vapors and futility of futilities, says the preacher, vapor of, vapor of vapors and futility of utilities, all is vanity, emptiness, falsity, and vainglory. What profit, what profit does man have? Okay, I think this one, King James is sweeter. Let me read New King James. All right. Say so vanities of, okay, the words of the preacher, the son of David, king in Jerusalem. Vanity of vanities, says the preacher. Vanity of vanities, all is vanities. What profit has a man from all his labor? What profit has a man from all, all his labor in which he toils under the sun? One generation passes away and another generation comes, but the earth abides forever. The sun also rises and the sun goes down and hastens to the place where it arose. The wind goes towards the south and turns around to the north. To the, north. the wind, the the wind whirls about continually and comes again on its circuit. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. To the place from which the river comes, they, there they return again. All things are full of labor. <laughs> Man cannot express it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. That which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There is nothing new under the sun. Is there anything of which it may be said, if, see, this is new. 
It has already been in ancient times before us. There is no remembrance of former things, nor will there be any remembrance of things that are to come by those who we come after. Are you seeing what I'm saying? And that was how his journey began. That was how he began to make his researches. And I'm going to encourage every one of us to go back and make a study on Ecclesiastes because we'll be studying, I think the month of April, we'll be dedicating it to studying books. And I feel we should start with the book of Ecclesiastes so that we'll stop eating the bread of afflictions. All right? Now, look at what I just said there, um, what the preacher said. Say so what, verse 3, he said, what profit has a man from all his labor in which he toils under the sun? It is laziness to wake up every morning doing the same thing over and over and over again. Did you hear what I said? It is laziness. Every morning, you wake up, you go to the office, you do nine to five, and even in that office, is the same thing you are doing over and over again. Do you see that they are reducing you to something that you are not? <laughs> you know, when... Baru made that statement on Friday. Hmm. <laughs> he didn't know what he opened. Say so somebody told him, but he did not know what he opened. He opened up a whole chapter of scripture. And I began to see why even the ecclesia of Jesus Christ that is supposed to be the wine that was introduced to bring new things and to bring sweetness. The reason we have been encircling around and why people are beginning to get tired and why what once was exciting have become a religious routine is because we became lazy. So if I come here every day and I'm teaching you the same thing that we produce what had been, I have become a lazy teacher, a lazy preacher. Guess what? I'm no longer paying my debts. Remember what we said concerning the word preacher? The word preacher is one who pays his debt. His debt. So every time I preach, I'm actually paying a debt of the knowledge that say, to whom much is given, much is expected. To whom much is given, much is expected. So the much that has been given me, I owe mankind, I owe the whole of universe this debt to pay back based on what has been put in me to give back onto the cosmic range in order to bring them into divine alignment so that they are no longer in the oppression of the wickedness of darkness but they are set free at liberty to begin to rule and reign. Us, just as the Lord created us to reign with him in all of majesty. Hallelujah. Oh dear. I'm having issues with my power. I don't want this to go off. So we're going to pause again. Just a moment.
Yeah. So, amen. So, you see, so it is actually laziness. Have you noticed about, have you noticed something about creative people? And you are by nature, by ordination, you are a creative person. Because if you were created in the image of God, after his likeness, it then means you manifest creativity, you manifest as a creative. Now, creative people don't do the same thing over and over again. They do things differently. I remember as a teens counselor that even on Sunday mornings, we never have the same sitting arrangements in two Sundays. We, we have unique arrangements, so people don't know what to expect. And that is why one of the things that have tired people out in church attendance is because they literally know. That is why I remember there was a time that even as a sound engineer, I just go set things up, make sure everything is working. Then I go somewhere to just go and pray till the praise worship starts. I come for the praise worship. After the praise worship, I leave, I leave because the truth is no other thing interested me. I remember also when I was in the choir that anytime our own group, we were called the Glory Landers in those days, anytime the Glory Landers were to minister, you will see children waking up their parents. You know, they are eager to go to church. But anytime there is another group called the Senior Choir, anytime they wanted to minister, you find that you have to literally drag your children out of bed. So there was something, and that was because in the Glory Landers, we tried to do things we did, they were unique. We did not, we just did not believe in routine. And that that imputed something in me, and that is the God nature that was being that was being stepped up, that was being made, that was that was expressing itself, even though we did not understand it at the time. But now I know it well. Amen. So in all of this, we need to come to that place in our lives when we begin to ask ourselves the same thing. Even in that office, do you know what makes a man stand out in even in your office is when you find people begin to, it's your uniqueness, the unique taste, the unique, um, the uniqueness that you bring into that particular organization. That what, that's what makes you stand, stand out, number one. And that's also what gives you the leverage of promotion. But when you do the same thing over and over, you just know your job and just you're doing that. There's nothing creative. You are not bringing anything new to the table. You find that those who came after you will promote will, will be promoted. I, I won't let me let me change my tongue. Those who came after such a person will be promoted above them, and the person will be complaining. Ah, then you start giving prayer points out. I don't know why I'm not being promoted. This happened, that happened. Listen, except there is an oppressor in that place. But guess what? When you do things uniquely, have a daughter in the Lord that anytime they have, there is a hard thing that they want to do in her office, she's, they know who to call. She's the one to call. So of recent that promotion, to, there was an opening. They were now using a different criteria I said, listen, go into the courts because you have all the rights. You see, I wouldn't have even supported her if all she was doing was the normal routine. But I know that she was bringing something to the table that that organization cherished. They needed it, but now that the opening of has come what one the people there are not wise because what they did not know was that this lady carries a priesthood for the elevation and the promotion of that organization. But they wanted to bring in politics as they go to court. Why? Because her getting into that place was by prophecy, and there's a destiny fulfillment and there's a timeline. So if she does not enter into that place at this particular time, what means that the timeline is going to be distorted? And I knew that it wasn't time for her to resign. 
So we went to court. I've not called her to know how the story has ended, but I know no matter what they do, it's going to end in her good, in her favor, because she is herself favor. But where I'm going is this. There is no profit in labor if all you do is routine. It is actually laziness. What it means that you have not learned to walk in rest, or you have not learned to enter into rest. Somebody will ask, what has this got to do with light? Everything. Everything. It's got everything to do with light because it is by wisdom. It is by knowledge and understanding that you make profits. It is not by your labor. Except your labor, as a matter of fact, the only thing that you are allowed to labor for is to labor to enter into his rest. And what does it mean to enter into his rest when your labor becomes worship? And your labor cannot be worship and you are not expressing the wisdom, the knowledge, and the understanding of God. Your labor cannot be worship if everything you do does not praise the name of the Lord. See, so you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a people who have the ordination to show forth the glory of the Lord that is shining for the light. So in what you are doing, in that office, when you wash your plates, when you do your laundry, that thing you are doing, can you say that you are expressing glory? Or are you just doing it because it's what? Are you doing it out of the duty that you owe an organization? Or you are doing it, your duty there is to glorify the name of the Lord and to show forth his praise that all eyes will see. Clap their hand at the trees, the plants, the nature, all of nature, all the cosmic realms, they will see and begin to glorify your Father who is in heaven. When he said, let your light shine, that men may see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. What is the good works? It's your job. It's your assignment. It's the way you handle your pen. Can somebody see it? and be attracted to the glory of God. The way you attend to people, the way you use your stethoscope, the way you use your equipment and your tools, can somebody see the way you are stirring the soup in the pot and begin to glorify the Father in heaven? Let's cook a little, a little. Let's make a pot of soup. There's a soup in Nigeria called a goosey soup. Made from melon. Now I can decide to put water in the pot with all the ingredients, the beef, the fish, the smoked fish, what they call okboroko, stockfish. <laughs> the Cameroon pepper, or the black pepper, or the atarodo. Pour my palm oil in that water while it's boiling. With my crayfish, ground crayfish and all of that, all the spice that I need to put in, put them in and boil. Then just come, I can decide to just pour my egusi in it after grinding. Just pour my ground melon into it. Then begin to stir. 
Now I can decide to leave it plain like that and I can decide to add vegetables. And that is green spinach or um, the ugu, that's the pumpkin. I can decide to do that or I can decide to first fry stew. And another time, I can choose a different way completely. I can use palm oil. I can use olive oil. I can use the granola oil. I can use the sunflower oil. I don't have to say because... In my village, this is how I've been watching them do it. So that must be the way I do it. That's laziness. I must be creative. That is why when I get into the kitchen, in my priesthood, you cannot be a priest in your kitchen and you have a particular way that you cook. There will always, there will always be creative ways such that you cook your indomie and somebody who have been eating indomie now taste your indomie they see that what is it there is something about this indomie that's because a creative person handled it i've never eaten indomie before but i remember the few times i prepared it for people Because I did not even use the ingredients that they put inside it. I created my own ingredients. Remember one of my birthdays, people came to my house, and that was 2022. People came to my house and they ate fried rice. And when I told them that I did not use either non or maggi to cook the fried rice, it was hard for them to believe. Creative ways. Just imagine if I were to be a chef or if I were to be running a restaurant. Do you know why people will keep patronizing me? Because I will not cook the same meal the same way. So you see, when you do this over and over and over and over again, and there is no difference, that is why you can't produce, you can't be doing something the same way and expect to get a different result. That is why you see that the failures that have been is the failures that keep getting repeated. Why? Because it's the same routine that had been going on. That's why you see that every time change comes is because somebody came and did what you have been doing the same way, did this in a different way, got the, and you see that it produced a different result that is better than what had been. Why do you think people fight change? <laughs> have you thought about it? It's a mystery. Have you noticed that even in messages that we preach, why do you think that the former generation fought this generation. This generation, if care is not taken, if we keep continuing in the routine that we are doing, we will fight the next generation. <laughs> so you see that, now look at those who make waves. What happens? These are creative thinkers. They don't do much. So you, that's why they say, um, what is a complaint? How do they put it? They said, they walk like elephants, but they eat like ants. But there are people who walk like ants and they are eating like elephants. What's the difference? What do you robots call Ogmon? It's wisdom. That's why you see the generals the generals, they will sit in their office. They are strategists. But you see, the lower rank officers, they go and they are doing all the labor, but the, the, 
the generals, they are thinkers. They create, they already see the victory. So they just send you out to appropriate the victory. Now, if you walk according to the plan of the general, you will be amazed that you won't do much and you'll be obtaining great victories. But if you go there thinking that, oh, because you are an expert in handling AK-47, you'll find that you'll be doing so much and you'll come back with a lot of injuries if you don't get killed. Why? Because you, you just feel, no, no, no. You have the strength, you have it. That is the difference between an engineer who knows his or her onions and a technician who knows the technical know-how. The technician believes that, no, 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 practical, practical, we have to do, but the engineer says, yes, I know you've been doing it this way. Can we just do it this way? And then you may, it will be foolish to tell the engineer, it's theory you know, it's theory you know. There is something they see by reason of research, they have come to a place of knowledge. They have gathered wisdom that will help you. You that have the technical know-how, right? You know the practicals. Pay attention to what you call theory because that theory is wisdom that you need to enhance your practical. Now, you now imagine somebody that has this, the, 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 the knowledge then also knows the practical. Imagine how this person would be doing things differently. The reason my shoes were different from the shoes uh, they, they were, that were being produced in a area market in those days, even though I learned from them, the difference was that I had a knowledge, I possessed a wisdom that they did not have. So I did things differently. Even though I learned from them, they soon began to market my products higher than, in fact, marketing my products as if they were imported. What was the difference? A creative realm that I entered into. Just imagine if now, if what I know now about the wisdom of God, if I should be permitted to create shoes. Or to create back, to go into leather works. That is why for those of you who are traders, for example, the reason you are probably not shining forth as light is because you have been doing things routinely. That's why you are not making much profit. Look at it. I want you to program, play, play back your trades in the past three years. You will understand what I'm saying. But don't just stop there. When you discover all of the errors, errors of in routine, errors of routine, errors made by routine, now you make up your mind to break the routine. What can I do differently? It's in your doing things differently. That is where your wisdom breaks out. That is where the light begins to shine that attracts kings. The reason Nigeria cannot attract investors right now is because we keep doing going round in circles. You see, we are making the same mistakes in a different way. Why? We want to keep doing what they have been doing before. Listen, until somebody decides to do something radical in the political arena, Don't talk. Do. Look at Abia State. 
within one year in office, what we thought can never be possible in Nigeria became possible. That a place is now having 24-7 light power. Why? Somebody decided to do something differently. So you ask yourself the question, is it not the same Nigeria? So what is it in Abia that cannot be done in Lagos states? Routine. The difference is going outside of the box. Routine will box you in. The day you decide to go outside of the box, you can be sure that you no longer do things by routine anymore. It happens in everything about life. And that was what the preacher was saying. That because there is nothing new under the sun, what has been would be. So what do you then do? Climb outside of the sun. Climb, be, go beyond the sun and get into the place where you are seated, where you rule over the sun, where you rule over the stars, where you yourself, you are a star amongst many stars. And from there, you begin to bear the rule. And that is what it means to shine. So right now, are we seeing the expression of what he said in Isaiah chapter 60 in the whole earth? The answer is yes. The expression is strong. It's a darkness. He said, look carefully, darkness blankets the earth and thick clouds covers the nations. Is that not what we are seeing? People are covered in gloom. They are covered in confusion. All of the nations, even the first world, as they call themselves, the first world nations, the, the, the second world nations, they are in confusion right now. Why? Because they have done things by routine, continuously. Let's keep oppressing Africa. Let's keep oppressing Africa. But listen carefully. The day somebody will rise to say, you know what? We've been locking Africa down. Let's liberate Africa. If in locking Africa down, we made so much profit, what just imagine what it would be if we liberate Africa. They will kill that man. <laughs> they will kill that because what they will see operating under the sun is that this man wants to take bread out of their mouths. But you know what? When you say, the, the moment you decide to do things differently, doing something differently will be that instead of shutting these people down, let's release them. If in their caging, if their caging produced so much in our nation, what would their liberation do? That's what we see in Romans chapter 11. That's what we see in Romans chapter 11 when he was talking about the children of Israel. Say, so if they are falling away brought salvation to us, what will their restoration do? In the same way, if the locking down of Africa transformed the whole of the Western world, what would the liberty of Africa then do to the Western world? But you see, the wisdom of man and the tyranny of routine will shut their minds to that knowledge and to that wisdom.
Oh God. You know, when you study Solomon, the wisdom of Solomon was such a bright light that we begin to see the fulfillment of this scripture in his life. The nations will be attracted to your radiant light and kings to the sunrise glory of your new day. Kings were coming to learn at the feet of Solomon because of the light that he showed. Wisdom. The queen of Sheba came and look at her report. He said, ah, it was not told me. The things that I, were to I was told, they are just half of the reality. They did not give me the full picture. Listen, can people make this kind of report about you by reason of the wisdom that you display and you express that by the time your boss meets you, you say, wow, I've heard so much about you. But you never knew your wisdom was speaking. Your light was shining. As a matter of fact, your light is what is the door opener that becomes, that charts the course of your promotion. Because of that good work that you are doing, that great thing that you are doing, you are not looking at your boss, you are not even looking to please men. All you are doing is to glorify the name of the Lord. Your priesthood is shining forth as a great light. Guess what? You will see that there is something deep within that you never knew was there that begins to pull out. Why? Because the wisdom of God opens you up, excavates, excavates your being to bring out the death. When it's a deep calling out onto the deep. Wisdom excavates that which God buried inside you. That's why he said that it was by wisdom that the foundations of the world were discovered. And by wisdom, even the foundations were laid. It was by wisdom that the deep opened up. So there is something deep locked inside your deep that can only open up by wisdom. And that is what draws kings. You are not just a chosen generation just to be doing what? You are a chosen generation because you are a royal priesthood. What? You can't be a royal priesthood and non legislator priesthood. A people ordained to show forth the praises of the glory of the Lord. And your, the evidence that you are showing it forth is embedded in this truth, in this fact that men, kings, nobles, princes, princesses, nations are being drawn onto your wisdom. Where all of a sudden you are hiding, you are hiding to do your thing. All of a sudden, they fish you out. Your boss looks for you. Your ED looks for you. They say this ED, nobody knows him, nobody knows her. But because of your wisdom, they sort you out. Routine can bring that. It is creativity. That creativity battered from wisdom that does that. I've heard people say, I work hard for my money. Anytime I hear somebody say that, I say you are preaching under a curse. Because you don't work hard for money. Your money works hard for you. <laughs> you your labor is from the place of rest. Your work is from the point of ministry. You administer. That is work. And you do it with rest because it is by grace. It is not by your own ability. It is by grace that you do it. And that is where wisdom flows from. And that is what unleashes the light of God over the nations. The reason we have not seen the full expression of God's glory is because 
we have not yet entered into the place of divine rest. And I'm speaking to you this morning, praying and hoping that every one of us hearing the sound of my voice this morning, we come into this light and we come into this knowledge where you begin to see yourself breaking away from the routines that have locked you in. Listen, let me show you this. If the routine that you have been engaging, I'm going to use figures, for example. If the routine that you have been engaging has been making $10,000 for you weekly, Listen carefully to this. It then means maybe in the last three years and it's been $10,000, $10,000 weekly, it shows that you have been living in failure. Take it in. Because after a maximum of three months, there must be a shift. Okay, let's, if it's too late, if you did not get it right, between three months and six months, there must be a shift. Where you ought to be making at least 15,000 weekly from the 10,000 you were making. So if in the past three years, you, you, when you look back, it's been a steady 10,000 you've been making, you failed. I want to open up something for us. But when we talk about, when we say that we are wealth, we need to understand what being wealth, what manifesting as wealth is. What it means is that you've been living in a state of routine. You have not been progressing. Creativity pushes you forward. Because you are heading, you are pressing towards the high mark of your calling in Christ Jesus. So your yesterday cannot be playing out in your today and you think that you are making progress. Thank God you can pay the bills. But guess what? Your design was just, not just me meant to, your ordination is not limited to bill paying. Your ordination is to transform, to take cities, to transform cities, and to turn them over. Oh God, is somebody hearing me this morning that your ordination is beyond just paying bills? Your ordination, by your ordination, you were meant by design to not only take territories, take nations, but you were also meant to transform those nations and present them to God such that that nation becomes a shining light, a glow, an establishment of the kingdom of God upon the earth realm. A prototype of who God ordained you to be, you replicate that in a whole nation. Do you think corruption will still have a voice if we all begin to do that? If what I'm doing, even on this platform, weekly, week by week, Sunday in, Sunday out, all I'm doing is producing a people who are locked in routine, such that there is no kingdom profit, there is no financial profit, there is no um, character profit. I have failed. Irrespective of the number, I would have failed.
That is why when we teach the things we teach is to produce the very life, the character of God that will be so expanded that when men come into that light, there is a breaking forth, there is a busting forth of the liveliness of Yeshua, who is our everlasting father. Such that you are taken in, stared in the waters, then you are released as a fountain to water the nations of the earth. And you see them sprouting up as fruitful plants. The nations will be attracted to the radiant of your light and kings to the sunrise glory of your new day. Say, so lift up your eyes higher. Look all around you and believe for your sons are returning from afar. When your light begins to shine, your sons will return. Those the Lord has given you that you've been praying for destiny helpers. Your destiny helper is locked in your shine, rising up and shining as a great light. Jesus said, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto me. That was the brightness of our rising. Jesus is the brightness of our rising. So every time we lift him up in our hearts, we are shining our lights. He is the wisdom of God, which we have also become. Say, and your daughters are being tenderly carried. Watch as they gather together. Eager to come back to you. Now, when we read further, I don't want to go into this other part today. We'll continue next Sunday. But, but let me just read something to us. He said, then you will see with understanding and be radiant. Your heart will be thrilled and swell with joy. The fullness of the sea will flow to you. The fullness of the sea will flow to you. And the wealth of nations will be transferred to you. The wealth of nations being transferred to you is not the way we had interpreted it. It is when you rise in your shining. The sea of the nations. What is the sea of the nations? The, the sea of people. It's not just the fishes. It's not just the treasures in the sea. But the sea of people will come to you. And when they come, and I said, the wealth of the nations will be brought to you. If Africa will rise, if believers will rise, when we begin to shine as a great light, the whole world will begin to turn to us. Listen, when you read further, you'll be shocked to see. It began to describe the goods from Midian, Ephra, um, talked about Kedah, talk about uh, Nebaioth, all of these are the Middle East, the wealth within the Middle East, the people that we are saying want to take over the world, the reason we are thinking that is because we have not a reason to shine. When we begin to light up the city, when we begin to shine as a great light that God ordained for us to be, you will be amazed that we will no longer be complaining about Islamism anymore. The reason we are complaining is because we have refused to fish. When fishers don't fish. When we begin to fish, we'll see the nations coming and gathering, bringing themselves to us. I'm praying. And I'm trusting that we will come to that place and that point in our lives where the beauty of nations will be open to us in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Dios me mande.
Amen. So sorry about that. This time they went off. So had all right. So you see, I'm just trusting in all honesty that will begin to shine forth our light. And I want to give you a challenge. Even the way you work in your office. The way you manifest, the way you live your life as a wife, as a husband, as children, the way you operate in your school, as a grandmother, the way you live as a grandmother, the way you take care of your children, your, your children's children, at in you know, anything whatsoever you are doing, your profession, your business, you've been doing it in a particular way, and you've been making a steady profit. In a particular way. Do you know why sometimes the Lord permits? Hear me and hear me well. Do you know why sometimes the Lord permits that our businesses, certain things get into trouble? The Lord permits it. It's because he wants you to do things in a different way. And I'll show you scripturally. Job. Job. Job was already the richest among the people of the East. But God saw that this man, if he continues being the richest among the people of the Middle East, he wasn't going to fulfill his destined purpose. There's something about scrolls. There's something about purpose that the Lord is very particular about. And it's only in the place of your priesthood expressions where you begin to show for the glory of the Lord, where you allow your light to shine, where you express the wisdom of God, that is where that destiny is being fulfilled. So the Lord had to permit that everything around you be shut down. Everything. And I'm preaching this as a message of hope to that person that had been wondering, I'm losing everything. Business is not doing well. This is not doing well. That is not doing well. I have news for you this morning that the Lord is calling you to a place of changing your routine. We have professional doctors here, people in the, in, the, in the medical profession here. You've been trying a particular routine treatment, and it's not, you see that it's not working. What do you do? They say, okay, let's change their routine. Dr. Denika is here. Mommy, if I'm wrong, please correct me. <laughs> They will say, let's change their routine. And by the time they change the routine, and I know that sometimes they will keep changing, changing until they get the one that will actually produce the result they are looking for. True or false, Yes, man. sir. Yes, sir. You're right, sir. So how come we've been doing something in a particular way, we are not getting a result, and we keep repeating the same thing? It is laziness. Mm -hmm. Absolute laziness. You don't want to try something else. You want to make, because this is what your father has taught you. Mm -hmm. that and that good. is what their father has taught them. And yet it's not giving you the needed result, but you want to continue in that line. It's laziness. Mm. Why not break out of the box? People like Martin Luther, when they discovered that they were doing something in a particular way, what did he do? His writing, his pen, how to go and shake the monarchy. Yep. Break away from that box. Break away from that hold. Break away from the from the tyranny of routine. Mm. Break it. It's a tyranny. Yes. Let's allow our hearts to flow into something because you by design you are a profit maker you are a listen yeah. god Amen. there are there are trade routes that are waiting for you to discover in yeah. the air to discover in the sea to discover in the land stop that routine that you have been doing that have been producing the same result over and over again as a matter of fact they are not even good results they are failures so i want you to ask yourself the question what is it I've been doing in the past three years that have been giving me the same result? I keep going around in circles. This message today 
It's a message to challenge you to be awakened in wisdom, to be awakened and be quickened in knowledge and understanding so that you will break away from the norm that has kept you, that has limited you so that you've not been able to progress. It's time. If you have been progressing, guess what? That progress that you have been, but you see, it's been the same kind of, you, what you call progress is because you, you, are, you are able to pay your bills, you are able to, to do what? Uh, to eat good meals and all of that. So you think you are making progress. But I want to ask you, what great investments have you been able to make? What nations, what kings have come, what, how many kings are beginning to answer to you? Even amongst your neighbors, how many people see you and they call you blessed? How many rejoice to be connected to you? It's time to change the norm. I'm praying with all honesty that the passion with which I have in me, that that same passion will be released on, on the platform to stir up people in their in the depth from the depths of their hearts to begin to do things differently. Let's break the hold of laziness. Let's start working. Let's connect with wisdom. Let's lay on the bed. And while we are on the bed, we are opening things up by reason of our ordination. And we are making transactions and causing things to happen in our territories. So by the time we are stepping out, we know just what to do. And you have more time for your family. You have more time for your leisure time as leisure time. And even your leisure time becomes profitable times. That kings will start coming. You will no longer be seeking kings out, but kings will sort you out. We seek you out. That your light will so shine that men from distant lands, kings and princes and nobles, they will come. They will say, we have heard of what God is doing. We want to partner with you. I speak into your life right now that new partnership will rise in the name of Jesus. That as you begin to shine forth your light, that you will draw partnership to, to, your, to your space. You will draw people bearing the merchants. The merchants will enter into your space. Kings will locate you and they will come with their wealth and they will say, we have seen that you have the wisdom to manage this. I decree and declare, you know, in recent times, I began to see oil wells being handed over to people on this platform. Why? Because they are coming into wisdom. So I release that unction now that from the far east, from, from, from places that you have never, people, how your name was mentioned in that place, you did not know. But kings we call to you, princes we call to you, nobles we come call to you, and they will say, We want you on our board. Whatsoever it takes, they will come from a distant land, they will come from Japan, they will come from Singapore, they will come from Kuwait, they will come from Oman, they will come from, from, from different islands, they will come from the US, they will come from the from Europe. They will say, We have heard your name. We need you in our board. What will it take? And anything you mention, they will do it because they have seen that you bear the wisdom that is needed. I speak unto you, anyone that is interested in this, that, is, that will take hold of this release right now. I declare that you will no longer be seeking jobs. Job will start seeking you in the name of Jesus. By reason of the glory expressions that you are now manifesting, that is now breaking out on you, by reason of this light that is coming upon you right now, you will rise in this glory. You will rise. Your brightness, kings will come to your brightness. Nations will come to your brightness. They will flow into it in the name of Jesus. People will go to your Lekendom page. People will go to your Facebook page. People will go to your, to your social media handles and they will start connecting with you.
by reason of the wisdom that you begin to express on those platforms in the name of Jesus. It will not, you will no longer be seeking people to follow. Now people will seek you out to follow you in the name of Jesus. By reason of the things, the wisdom that you express, the knowledge that you release, the lights that you are shining for, that you are beaming for, they will come to you. They will come to you. They will come to you from the north, from the south, from the east, from the west. They will come in the name of Jesus. Just pray that one person is getting this today. You know, as I began to read through this, see, but I'm just stopping here today. But when you talk about the wealthy merchants from Sheba, the queen of Sheba, remember her? What did she come to? She came to the brightness of Solomon's rising. When Solomon wanted to build, kings were saying, we will give you all the materials and we will even send laborers. When wisdom rises, when, not, when your light, when you begin to shine in your light, you will find that everything you need, they will give you contracts and they will give you the, they will even supply the workers and the funds for you to execute the contract. And you'll be wondering, so what exactly am I doing? Because you are a man of wisdom. Because you are a woman of wisdom. Oh my goodness. I'm speaking into somebody's life right now. The door that you've been waiting to open, that door is not only opening, but it's a door that will require a high level wisdom that had is going to call by reason of the wisdom that you have been embedded, that have been lying dormant in you. The door that is now opening is a door that we call up that wisdom. Don't cave in. Don't shy away from it. It is coming. It is coming. Listen, all the things you went through in the past, actually in the last year, Anet, Busola, you know, a few of you, Esther, there are things, even though you did not share it, but I have picked it. There are things you've been going through in the area of your profession. But you see, the Lord is saying, I permitted you to go through that route because I was breaking the tyranny of routine from off your life. When the Lord gave me this, when the Lord gave me this message, when he said I should talk, because I was meditating on that word. And the Lord said, I want you to teach the people. I want to break from them the tyranny of routine. So that they would become the mornings, the stars of the morning that they were ordained to be. So Abi, Batima. Sidi, Rhoda, you are all stars of the morning that the Lord have ordained to shine forth. But routine limited your ability to advance. But the Lord said today, the tyranny of routine is broken from off your lives in the name of Jesus. From now on, you begin to, the freedom to express the fullness of your being your, your the, 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 the freedom to walk in the path of destiny that he ordained for you to walk in is now released upon you, Blanche. Augustina. The glory expressions that have been locked in ages past is now released to manifest in your life, Fulola. The glories... Douglas, the glories of divine performance, divine elevation is now released on you, Samson. You shall no longer be time forsaken. The time when you were forsaken is over. The Mwabokus, I speak this into your realm. I speak this into your life. Timmy Tokwe, Adegoke. That which you have been craving, Eunice, that which you have been longing for, the doors are now opened unto you. 
Baru and Violet, you have walked in a realm, but the Lord is saying, I'm catapulting you into yet another realm. Ola, I see glory is breaking out all around you. Kuta, Esther, Chidima, Amen, Bitayo, the glory of the Lord, Fiona, the glories of the fathers that they kept on spinning in routine. But the Lord said the glory had been seeking a pathway of expression. He said, now I'm, I have seen a people whose hearts are ready to bear this glory. Irish king, do not say that, oh, why is it coming now that I'm old? Do not say that I'm old. But because every time I see you, I see your sons and circling around about you. Kelechi, the glory of the Lord that had been waiting, has been lying dormant, waiting for people that we come into alignment for these glories to be expressed. Now, it has located you. Dr. Adenike, this is the time, this is the season. Vivian Winifred, this is the time, this is the season. You will not be cut short and you will not be cut out. Neither will you be shut in, neither will you be shut out in the name of Jesus. But you will find expression because the nations are waiting, the continents are waiting. I see the Middle East, Iraq, they are, they are, they are roaring. India is waiting. This morning, the Lord began to show me operations of light in India. Pakistan. You see, the devastations that the spirit of darkness caused in all of these regions, the Lord says, now is the time for the children of light, the stars of the morning, to find expression. And as they begin to find expression, you will see a dance that will break out in all of these places where there had been gloom, where there had been darkness, where there had been operations of evil. And when this dance breaks out, you will see my glory being expressed. Then men will come into the full expressions of their liberty, said the Spirit of the Lord. I pray and I pray that you will not continue to allow your priesthood to languish in glooms and in limitations. I want you to say, I am more, say to yourself, I beat your chest and say, Clem, you are more than what situations have come you to be. You are not who situations called you. You are not who circumstances called you. You are the light. You are the light of the world. So, Clem, rise up, shine, for your glory has come. Your light is beginning to shine, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Clem, you will express this light. You will express this glory. The limits are taken out. The limits are broken. So, I declare, Clem, you are limitless. You are limitless. Carry your children along. Carry your children along. Lois, you are limitless. Esosa, you are limitless. Gideon, you are limitless. Yes, speak them forth. Eliora, you are limitless. Elio, you are limitless. Ivan, you are limitless. Ife, you are limitless. Zoe, you are limitless. Sharon, you are limitless. The, the limits are broken from off you. Speak it over your grandchildren. The limits are broken from off them. They will not perform, they will not walk in the routine that you walked. But they will walk in the supernatural realms of glory heights. That's what I release over you, Nyedikachi. That's what I release over you, Kelechi Kamsi. That's what I release over you. Nima, that's what I release over you. Dolakpo, I release it over you, Ayana, that from this day, you begin to walk in the realities of your school. The limits are taken out in the name of Jesus. Bolaji, you will walk in the fullness of life. Hamza, you will walk in the glories that, the fa that your Father in heaven has ordained, the glories that Jesus walked, you will walk in it in the name of Jesus. 
the limits are broken. The limits are broken. The limits are broken. I want you to just, just, just decree it. Make those decrees. This is your priesthood legislation. Enter into it. Enter into it. Solar, enter into it. Release, release yourself. Release your household. Release everything around you. And say, the tyranny of routine is broken from off my life. I walk in the liberty of the glory of the Lord. I express his glory. I am the light. Kings, they see me. They come to the brightness of my rising. They bow themselves to me. The nations, they submit themselves to me. Because I carry, I am the expression of the wisdom, the knowledge, and the, the very light and the life of God. Glory to God. Thank you, Father. We bless and worship him. We honor you, King of glory. In Jesus' name, we do decree. Amen and amen. All right. So we get to the end of the, this morning's broadcast. Depending on where you are, it may be night, maybe morning. But just to take, because I know that I touched some things that people maybe will. I know I hit some things, I know it, and I know it was hard. So if you have a question to ask, you want some clarity in certain areas, let's have it now. Also, please check. Also, please check um, the YouTube, um, YouTube in case there are questions there. You have questions. You have things that oh, something that you feel you just need clarity on. Let's have it. God bless you. Bye bye. All right, so I assume, I take it that I was able to convince you and not, com not confuse you. Thank God for that. Now, I said I was going to say something. Since you did not ask me questions, so I want to assume that you understood what we are saying. So now I want to ask you a question. Say, how do we go and fish? Okay. Good question. Because that's what I want to talk about. I was going to ask that what are you going to do about this? It's not just about hearing and agreeing with me. What will you do about this now? This is what I want to encourage you to do. When we talk about lighting of the cities, it is not something that you hear and you keep quiet. It's something that you hear and you practicalize. It's a practical lifestyle. It's a practical living. So I want to do this. I want you, if you really want to shine forth as light, the light that you are, if you want to manifest at the star of the morning that men will see your good works and glorify your father who is in heaven. You see that office that you are. You see that house, that home that you are. That friend that comes to visit you. That friend that you talk with on the phone. I want you to make from a habit. Let's develop kingdom jurisdictions. Don't make your visits um what I hollow visits. You know what I call hollow visits? Vanity visits. Visits that are nothing. Visits that are unfruitful. Let your visits be fruitful. When you start practicing this, you won't just go to just any place. Even in your 
you will find that even your shopping will become fruitful. Why? Because that's what it means to shine as light. That you meet, when you are going, you'll find that you will be sensitive. Now, one of the things we are going to be doing deliberately as we start book studies every Wednesday, the book study is for discipleship. The reason we want to do book study is to help you to start lighting up the cities. So at anywhere you go, when they ask you questions, you will be you would have been rooted, empowered. Even when they ask you professional questions, you will answer from kingdom perspectives. Ah, is, is somebody hearing me? Busola, are you hearing what I'm saying? Hola, Supo, do you, do, are you getting that? See, that, that, that when somebody asks you a professional question, when you are given an answer, you are giving it from a kingdom perspective. Do you know what you would have done? You would have opened up something that will show and not just endear you to the person, but endear you to the job. You can listen. I know that they say in every place, nobody is indispensable. Guess what? You can make yourself indispensable such that you are the one who takes control of the time, the place, and you decide when to leave. Nobody can sack you. The only time they can sack you is that God, the only time God permits them to sack you is because God has been saying, leave, leave, leave. For you, it, it is becoming a routine. God decides to break it. Then they will terminate you. It will look like disgrace. And it will be painful so that you won't make the mistake another time. Do you see what I'm saying? So, I want to encourage us, let's make it a habit. Let's make it a, a kingdom character that we possess that anytime I visit a friend or a friend visits me, that visit is not complete until we've talked the kingdom. Let's make our discussions, our chats, kingdom-based. Let's start superimposing all of the corruptions with kingdom discussions and let us see whether light will not break out. The light that have been locked within us will begin to find expression. That is what it means that we are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a people called to show forth the praise of the Lord. So in your office, get one person, prayerfully get in touch with one person. It might be your party, might be your enemy before now, but now the person becomes your spiritual body. Why? Because every time you have an interaction, it is a fruitful interaction. So get a body in the office. Get a body in your neighbor in your neighborhood. The person doesn't have to be in your house. Might be in your neighbor, in your neighborhood. Start interacting with them. Start reaching out to them prayerfully. You know, sending forth. Go back to quantum field. Engage quantum field and create quantum field and release release love, light and sound. Project it towards them and let them use that to attract them. Um, to meet up, I'm answering your question now. Use that to attract them. That is the that is the, the 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 fishing hook that you have thrown into the sea, laced with all manner of earthworms that will attract the fish. So it creates a vibration around them. All of a sudden, they begin to respond to your love. They respond to the lights that you are projecting, and they begin to hear the sound that you are releasing in the realms of the spirit. Very soon, they are attracted then they are caught in darkness, then you can hold them down and begin to teach them. Then also teach them what you have learned. Then as we learn, now when you have discussions with them, when they ask you questions and you don't have the answer, be honest, tell them, okay, you know what? I will come back with the answer. I'm going to make a research. Those are the kind of questions I want you to be asking me. With the teachings we've had, use that to deal with the ones you can handle. But the ones you can't handle, new things that are coming that you feel this one is higher than me, bring it and we'll be able to deal with it on this platform. So we are going to go into systematic study of the world, book by book. Let's do intense discipleship. Then your take-home assignment will be that the things you've heard us teach, 
go and teach others also who will also be able to teach others. And when they ask you questions, you give them answer. The ones you can't answer, bring them on the platform. We'll, we'll, the Lord will help us to deal with them. Let's open this up. Now, the next thing I want to say is this. Lord was just instructing me this morning. The next thing I want to say is this. Teachings that have blessed you. Teachings that have blessed you. Don't keep them to yourself. Share it amongst people. You know, there are times people will come to me, say, please, I'm going to I say, oh, we have a teaching on that. I don't have to start repeating. We have a teaching on that. Now, when they go to listen to the teaching, sometimes they now come with questions. And other times, it's been taken care of. Their questions are answered. Teachings that have blessed you, share with people. If they are not on Telegram, everybody has, has access to YouTube. Share, share the, the, the YouTube, the YouTube um, channel with them and send a specific message to them. You make research on messages that will bless people and share with them. That was how I connected most of you to, to, to Justin Abraham. Because some of his teachings have blessed me. I feel this will be a blessing to somebody. And I share it. I could have been eating it on my own, then come here to bobo you guys with big, big revelations. You won't know where I'm getting it from. But no, I want you to know where I got it from. So I will share it with you. I hear something from Nancy Cohen, I'll share it. I hear something from my person that will benefit you, I'll share it. Some are confirming some, something that we already taught, but I will still share it anyway. It is not because I want to validate my teachings. No, so that you will hear it from different perspectives. So let's, let's open this thing up. Let's get more people so that the light will be more. That's actually my desire. I have seen this work in the Middle East. So let's spread this light. Let's spread it. So teachings that have blessed you, that have shown light in your soul, why not also help somebody out there let the same teaching shine, shine light in them? You see somebody going through something, normally you would have say, ah, okay, I have a pastor that can pray for you, but now you say you have a teaching that can help you out of this. So the person will not just be free from it. The person now will be in a position to help others who, will be, who are going through similar challenges. So we are going to do some serial discipleship work. Because we can't be saying light up the city and we just come here and we are receiving and we are not shining our light. A city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Let your light so shine that men will see your good works and glorify your Father who is in heaven. God bless you. And the honor of the Lord rests upon you constantly in Jesus' name. I love you. Have a wonderful day.